and welcome back. This is Balloscope with an episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 3. I'm joined as always by my masterful party of Abel, Novin, Bloon, and Sackman. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of level grinding. And by quite a bit, I mean soul-wrenching amount of time. I have gotten everybody up to level 99. I've maxed out several job classes for all of them. They are all job level 99 for whatever I used them for in the LP as well as a few other ones. Now when you get to job level 99 with any new job class that you haven't gotten before you need to talk to the legendary blacksmith again because the legendary blacksmith will give you a super item that only that job class can use and these cards here. These cards are pretty much just trophies one for each job class. I do have all the jobs classes uh, cards. I have all 23 of them, including the Onion Knight and the Freelancer. And whenever you find the, the legendary blacksmith, she will give you the card and a really good equip item. For instance, Abel as the ninja gets the Muramasa, which is awesome. That is the that is the special item for a ninja. I'll go over the all the rest in a bit, uh, but first I want to explain how you can find the legendary blacksmith. First of all, you have to complete uh, the seven Wi-Fi emails for all the side quests. You gotta do those seven Wi-Fi emails. Then you have to do the Sarah's Pendant quest, and then you have to do the Ultimo Weapon quest. It's a lot of work. And then once you're all done with that, you have to have job level 99, and then you have to find the legendary blacksmith in one of eight random locations. Those locations are the Healing Copes, which is north of Tozis, the, the town where you had to be minied to go in. Uh, there, she could also be in Gasol, inside the Chocobo stable. She could be in Ur, the, the first town. Um, she's inside the well there. She can be in Castle Sassoon, in the East Tower on the third floor. She can be in Dwarven Hollows, near the entrance to the subterranean lake. She can be in Replito, inside the house at the north part of town. She can be in Doga's Village, near the huge tree in the middle of town. She can be in Saronia Castle, in the basement on the second level. She can be in the ancient ruins inside the inn, and she can be in the village of the ancients inside the inn. And like I said, it was random, and she moves. And she'll only give you one card and item at a time. So what I found the easiest way to do was to go to, to Ur and uh, go inside the well, then run over to uh, Castle Sassoon and go into the East Tower, check there, and just go back and forth and back and forth until I found her 23 times. That way I can get all the items that I need. Oh man, these... These items were worth it. I'm not even ashamed to say that I cheated to get this done. It still took me way too damn long. Oh, man. So, without further ado, let's look at our masterful party. What kind of equipment do they have? Okay, so Abel's got the Muramasa, which is an attack of 140. Not the highest attack out of any weapons. Not even the ones that we've seen to this point. It is better than the Masamune. Um, but... What they don't tell you is that these items also have hidden stats on them. For instance, the Muramasa gives gives Havel plus 5 to Strength, plus 10 to Agility, plus 5 to Vitality, plus 5 to Intelligence, and plus 5 to Mind. Yeah, this is what he looks like when he's fully maxed out with every, all the good stuff that he can get, except for the Ribbon, but still. Uh, you know, you can't get the ribbons until very late in the game. And I, uh, you know, had to reload an old save in order to get to this. So, I don't I only have the one ribbon, so nobody's going to have a ribbon. For a magus, you get the Millennium Rod, which is awesome. Look at that, attack of 110. And then you get the Omni Rod, uh, and he, he's, he's got a massive attack. Uh, the Millennium Rod gives Novin plus 10 to intelligence, plus 10 to mind, and it also casts Blizzaga, which is awesome. For the Devout, you get the Holy Wands and Bloom. Now, Bloom can do a lot of attacking as well. Uh, the Holy Wand gives plus 20 to mind, and it can cast Kiraga. Fair enough. Yeah, you combine that with the, the Elder Staff that you get in Eureka. You, you've, got, you've got yourself quite a White Mage. And, of course, the Black Belt does the most damage unarmed. What do you want me to say? You know, look at that. Nothing comes even close 
to 396 attack with him unarmed. Uh, what you do get is the Master Dogi. I think they're going for Dogi there. And the Master Dogi not only gives him 54 defense, but also gives him plus 10 to agility and plus 10 to mind. Now, I'm going to switch my party around, show off all the different uh, max items, all, all, that, all the mastery items. Be right back. With our initial setup as a warrior, black mage, white mage, and monk, you get the gigantic axe for the warrior, which has just as much of an attack power as the ultimate weapon, plus it gives you plus 20 to strength. And of course, yeah, crystal stuff is always the best if you can wear it. Uh, for the Black Mage, you get the Lilith Rod, which is has an attack of 110. You pair that with the Omni Rod, you've got yourself an attacking Black Mage. Uh, plus, it also gives a plus 22 intelligence, and it also casts Death, which is always good. Now, for the White Mage, you don't get you don't get a staff. You actually get the Angel Robe, which not only gives 45 defense, but also gives 45 magic defense and it gives plus 20 to mind if you can't tell what mind is kind of a white mage type thing and if we have the monk once again barehanded is always best at this level and then you can get the shura gloves shura gloves give plus 45 to defense plus uh, 19 to magic defense plus 20 strength with my second setup with Abel as a knight, Novan as a geomancer, Bloon as a scholar, and Sackman as a ranger, you can get the Save the Queen, which even though it has the same uh, attacking power, even less than the ultimate weapon, the same as, I believe, the Ragnarok? Yeah, same as the Ragnarok, uh, but this the Save the Queen also gives plus 10 to vitality, plus 10 to mind, and it also casts Reflect, which is awesome. With Novan, you get and, and the Geomancer, I should say, you get the Blessed Bell, and that has an attack of 130, plus it does plus 10 to agility, plus 10 to intelligence, plus 10 to mind, which is also awesome. For the Scholar with Bloom, you get the Omnitome, which has an attack of 130. I mean, these are very powerful attacking items that we're getting. Plus, it gives plus 10 to intelligence, plus 5 to mind. Now, with Sackman, I don't have any arrows on me, but you get the Artemis Bow if you max out your Ranger. And for that, you get an attack of 122 with plus 10 to Strength and plus 10 to Agility. And then, you know, you can, you can use arrows to actually inflict damage, which is always good. Okay, now we're getting into job classes that I did not show off during the regular Let's Play. Um... Uh, we did have a Dark Knight, and the ultimate weapon for the Dark Knight is the Murakuma, which does 140 damage, so still not as much as the ultimate weapon. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, Ultima weapon. Uh, but it that does give plus 22 agility as well. Uh, for an Evoker, though, yeah, this is the this is the first new one for the Evoker. Uh, you get the Royal Crown, which also, which gives a regular defense of 33, a magic defense of 36, plus 10 to intelligence, plus 10 to mind. When we get to the Bard, which, I'll be honest, I am not a fan of the Bard. Uh, there, there, you, there's no real weapons, really. You get three weapons and it just pretty much changes what, um, what you can afflict on the opponents if you use it special in battle. So uh, the Lamia does confusion, silence, and then nothing on Loki. Uh, the special item that you can get for maxing uh, Bard is the Ballad Crown, and the Ballad Crown has a defense of 35 and a magic defense of 35, plus 10 to vitality, plus 10 to mind. And then of course, the Dragoon. I forgot to equip. There we go. The Dragoon's ultimate weapon is the Magic Lance, which has an attack power of 145. You pair that with the Holy Lance, and damn, that's an attacker. The, the Magic Lance also gives... Uh, where is that? There it is. Plus 20 to Strength. Uh, then, of course, all the Crystal Equipment. There it is. On to the next set. 
with the Freelancer now that Abel is back on Freelancer. Remember, that's the one that you get when you first start the game. Pretty much no job class is a Freelancer. Uh, you'll notice, yeah, he doesn't have a special weapon as a Freelancer. You get the ultimate weapon Excalibur, which does, you know, 292 damage overall. Uh, his special item as a Freelancer are the Celestial Gloves, which uh, give 40 regular defense, 18 magic defense, and plus 15 to all stats. Those things are awesome, but you have to be a freelancer in order to use it. That's the problem. And as, as you can see here, the magic is, is nothing. You can use 49 level 1 white magics, and that is it, which is kind of disappointing. Now, uh, the red mage, you can get the, the same setup, the ultimate weapon, and the Excalibur. Um, and his special item is the Crimson Vest, which is uh, 50 defense, 25 magic defense, and plus 10 to all stats. So I would always recommend getting a red mage instead of a freelancer, but that's just me. You, you get the same amount of MP for level 1, plus everything up to, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, level 5? Why would you ever stick with anything lower? Or why would you ever stick with a freelancer instead of a red mage? Maybe that's just me. Uh, the summoner, which we never got to see. You can see the summoner definitely has a horn there. I think this is the first appearance of a horn for a summoner in Final Fantasy games. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, you get the astral bracers for the summoner. Let's see here. Those give you 47 defense, 20 magic defense, plus 10 to intelligence, and plus 10 to mind. Now the thief, I have been swearing off the thief for a long time. His special weapon is the Gladius, 130 attack. That thing is awesome. Uh, plus 20 to agility, so he should be going a lot sooner as well. And now for the last of the job classes, last set, I swear, I know this is taking a long time, but we do have an Onion Knight, the best class in the game by a mile, if you ask me. Uh, for this, uh, you get the, uh, the Onion Blade, which has an attack of 150, plus a bonus of plus 7 to all stats. That thing is insane. Uh, we'll go over why the, the Onion Knights are the best job class in a second, uh, just know that they are. Uh, Dovin is also an onion knight right now because, you know, 23, so somebody had to sit, sit one of these out. Uh, for a sage, you get the sage staff, uh, which has an attack of 110. So much better than the omni rod. Uh, plus it gives you, where is that? Plus 10 to all stats. Also, awesome, but yeah, no defense. No defense on the sage. And then, of course, there's the viking, uh, something that I've pretty much been avoiding. Uh, like like the thief. Uh, for this one, you get the mighty hammer, which does 145 attack. Ugh, that's so much. Uh, plus it deals lightning damage. Plus it gives you plus 20 to vitality. And yeah, the dual hawk is the second best thing for him. Oh, and that is it for the job classes, really. But if we take a look here, uh, I'll show you a little bit of why. Um, why these stats are awesome. Look at that. 99 to every stat already. Uh, strength, agility, vitality, intelligence, mind. Uh, of course, Novin's not equipped with anything, so his is a little lower, still in 89. Now look at somebody else. Yeah. There's the Sage at 50. Uh, you know, max intelligence. Max intellect and uh, mind. I, I guess I, I apologize. I've been calling it intelligence this whole video. It's intellect, not intelligence. And then eh, the Vikings only got max strength. Plus, this is something that we haven't really gone over before, but Onion Knights can actually use all magic. They can use, well, they can use black and white magic, I should say. They cannot learn summoning magic, but really when you have flair who cares about summoning magic and especially when you can attack at the level that onion knights do by far the best class in the game and i'll be using them in the next bonus video i hope you guys have enjoyed this video you probably didn't laugh but i do hope you learned and i hope to see you next time thanks for watching